Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 1990 release Shockma, or as I like to call it, Walking the Movie. Because that's basically about an hour and 40 minutes of walking, which is what this film is. Now, if you're interested in this film, uh, when I'm doing this review, it is available on the Shutter streaming service. So you can check it out there. But I don't think I would really recommend this film, um, just because... It, it has some elements of, like, a so bad it's good, but not nearly enough, and it's way too long. And like I said, I call it walking the movie because it's mainly just people walking around a building cautiously for about an hour and 40 minutes uh, with a few interesting things thrown in here and there. Uh, whoa. I think if they shaved this film down to, like, an hour, it'd be a lot better. And then it could kind of fit into that category more of the so bad it's good film, but... Anyway, I'm going to break this down, what I thought was good, what I thought was bad about the film. Yeah, so spoilers, because um, it's an, a much older film. Now let's talk about Shakma, which is the name of the baboon in this film, although not the actual name of the baboon. It's just script-wise, it's the name of the baboon. The actual baboon's name in real life is Typhoon, just so people know, and I'll tell you a little bit about Typhoon in a minute. This is directed by Hugh Parks. Uh, it's actually co-directed. Hugh Parks was one of them. He did films such as Deadly Innocence, Dream Trap, and The Vampire Wars, and that's vampire spelled with a Y. And also Tom Logan was involved, who also did Dream Trap and also directed The Mark, Camp and Buddies, This Too Shall Pass, The Hag, and The Farm, which The Farm was recent-ish within the past bunch of years. Uh, written by Roger Engel, who wrote nothing else. And guess what? It shows. Uh, it, it's very understandable that this was this person's only script. Very understandable. Uh, Amanda Weiss is in this. She's probably the most recognizable person other than Roddy McDowell, but I'll talk about him in a second. But Amanda Weiss is in this, who plays the character of Tracy, who she was also in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Nightmare on Elm Street. That's where most pro people probably know her from. Better Off Dead and The Hatred, just to name a few films that she's done. Um... Yeah, she was a recognizable name, as well as Roddy McDowell, who played Sorensen, who was the doctor slash surgeon slash vet. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and he's been in some some films, such as uh, he was in a bunch of episodes of The Alfred Hitchcock Hour, by the way. He was also in Planet of the Apes, Escape from the Planet of the Apes, The Legend of Hell House, which I have seen that one. Um, Class of 1984, which I've also seen and done a review for on my channel, so you can look for that. Fright Night, which I've also seen, love, and have done a review for that on my channel. And Fright Night Part 2, which I have yet to see. So, also put in the comments real quick, do I need to see Fright Night Part 2? Is it worth it? And if yes, I will watch it, and I'll do a review on it. Just saying. So, like I said, the b baboon who plays Shockma's actual name is Typhoon, and he actually showed up in a few other films around this time. He was in the film, which I haven't heard of this, Order of the Black Eagle. Is anyone out there? You can put in the comments, do you know about this film? The other one people do know about, The Fly, the remake of The Fly with Jeff Goldblum. So, pretty famous uh, baboon, just saying. Um... <laughs> Typhoon had two trainers on set. Now, one of these trainers' jobs was to piss Typhoon off. It was basically one trainer was there to kind of, like, really handle him, make him behave, calm him down, and stuff like that. The other one was there just to make him mad, basically, because, obviously, they needed that for the film. They needed him to get angry. They needed him to get aggressive, because that's what the film is about, an aggressive baboon trying to kill people. Now, how did they make Typhoon aggressive, you may ask? This is how they did it. It's very weird. I didn't understand. The, like, I don't get how, like, this makes him mad. But those scenes, which the majority of the scenes of him being pissed off are when he's just, like, attacking a door, if you've seen the film. Um, there's a whole lot of Typhoon attacking a door. Although, I will just call him Shakma from now on because we want to stay in the context of the film. So, there are a lot of scenes of Shakma attacking doors. Now, the reason for that is the other trainer would be on the other side of the door and would be whispering the name Typhoon to, to the baboon. And for some reason, this got him really, like, worked up and agitated, and then he would just, like, attack the door. Who knew? I mean, it's so weird, but you saw how pissed off... If you've seen the film, you see how pissed off he is. Like, those, honestly, as far as the baboon goes, those are the best scenes in the film. As far as, like, actually having some sort of, like, 
terror or like scariness to it because he looks like super pissed off like he's gonna beat those doors down and he's super aggressive so uh in the very beginning the music and how they flash the title up on the screen with the very very ominous music is very over the top they also carry that music right over into that opening uh surgery scene with uh Sorensen, who's you know um doing some surgery on Shakma at that point with all the people watching and it was it's weird because the music it's just like so like building and ominous and it makes you feel like it's going towards something and then it just kind of like stops and it, it, it like turns into nothing with the scene really and you're just like okay and then right when that happened I was like I think I think I'm getting the idea of what type of film this is like not a good one type of film which you know Honestly, when you read the synopsis of it's like a killer baboon and it's from 1990 and it's on Shutter, it's probably not a good film. <laughs> so that should have been my first indicator. Um, I love the setup with these guys using the building for a game. It does seem odd that everyone's in on it, though, and they're okay because isn't this supposed to be like a place of business, I assume? <laughs> But you you do realize that Sorensen, I guess, is in charge of everything, and he's down with this game, and he's even putting up, like, a cash reward for whoever wins the game. So I like the premise that they go into this film with, with, oh, they're using it for kind of like an alternate reality type game, and kind of, it's got this D and, you know, Dungeons and Dragons kind of feel to it, in a sense, which I think is obviously very much oversimplified if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons or know enough about it. And I think that also a lot of the characters are oversimplified to be these kind of eccentric people who play Dungeons and Dragons. I say that because I know a lot of people who play Dungeons and Dragons have and still do. And I myself have played Dungeons and Dragons in the past. And as recently as maybe six years ago or so, somewhere in that time period. I haven't played in quite a while, but yeah. Anyway, just saying. Uh, but I like the the setup, basically, and I think it, it was a decent way to kind of set up that, that they would be in the building and isolated, uh, so that kind of makes sense why once Shakma gets loose and is trying to kill, like, it's hard for them to get out of there, and it's a reason to have a lot of people around to be killed. So, yeah. An experiment to make an aggressive animal more aggressive. How could that go wrong? And I also like how quickly Sorensen wants to bail on that, too. You know, they have this talk where they're talking about the specific type of baboon that Shakma is, is very aggressive. And then they talk about how they're do, doing this experiment to make him more aggressive. And I'm just like, okay, doesn't seem like a good idea. And then once he kind of like lashes out and almost hurts someone, or no, does hurt the one guy's arm, uh, Sorensen is just immediately like, put him down, we're done, we're bailing on this. So he went through all this work. And he's knowingly taking a very aggressive animal, making it more aggressive. Then it becomes aggressive. Doesn't kill anyone yet. And he's just like, okay, just destroy it. We're done with this. What was the point of what you were doing in the first place is my big question. Like, where were you going with this? And then just decided, oh, I'm bailing on it now. I don't know. Maybe he was just concerned about the insurance situation or the workers' comp claim that that individual was able to uh, or would have been able to file had they not been killed. Seems like there's kind of this creepy vibe between Sam and Kim of, like, this un this dude, like, trying to get with this underage girl, kind of. There's, like, this weird thing between them. But to put people at ease about that, I looked into it, and during the filming of this of the film, uh, Ari Myers, that's who plays Kim, she was 21 years old at that time when the film came out. So she was at least 20 years old when they were filming, I assume, at least 19. So... There you go. So not, nothing bad going on, nothing untoward. And when the film came out, uh, Christopher Atkins, who who plays Sam in this, was like 29. So just so you know. But it, it was this weird feeling that she was like in her teens and underage in the film. Did anyone else feel that? It's really kind of gross. Uh, honestly, as they're playing, the game seems like it could actually be kind of fun. Like it, it has a fun idea to it. Now, that said... It goes on too long before things get crazy, and then after that, the film just goes on too long, and things aren't crazy. Um, the, the the craziness period in this film of when Shakma first gets out and people start to die is very, very short-lived, and then it gets extremely slow, and that's when it turns into, what I was saying, 
walking the movie with people just walking around trying to dodge Shakma. And you can tell that all the scenes they were shooting of Shakma, like actually moving around and being angry and stuff like that, were done without any actual cast members there, which was probably good for numerous reasons. For mainly, you don't want anyone to actually get hurt. You just want the trainers there. And then also, apparently Amanda Weiss was very afraid of Typhoon. So, yeah, you don't want her around for that. You can tell when Shakma attacks people, it's a fake baboon. And that is a funny element to the film. So I'm glad that it looks bad. The fake Shakma looks as bad as it does. It seems like he's got more, you know how like Shakma has like that kind of like frizzy, whitish, grayish tuft around his head. Um, it seems like that's even bigger and even more exaggerated on the fake Shakma when the attacks are happening. So, but the people like wrestling around with the fake Shakma, pretty funny. I, I, I did enjoy that, but there's not enough of that. There's not nearly enough of that. Of course, these horny 20 somethings take the time, uh, out of the game to bone. That is what Sam and Tracy get into when they're just like, Oh, let's flip off the lights, ignore this game that we're both trying to win. Cause there's $1,500 at stake. And Tracy even says that'd be a great down payment for my car. But no, boning's more important because they're 20-somethings. The practical effects for Richard's mangle, mangled face were pretty solid. He was the first, or, I'm sorry, not the first, he was the second person to die at the hands of Shakma. And I do think, you know, they showed it up close, his mangled face, like two or three times. And it looked pretty good. But other than that, the deaths, the bodies when they're found don't look very good. It just looks like they threw some fake blood on and that's about it. They put all their focus for the the, the grisly part on uh, Richard's dead body. Is it me or do all the male characters other than Sam in this film seem super annoyed at everything? And that kind of brings up another thing is that the characters in this are very, very one dimensional. You don't get much of any backstory on all of them. You don't really care about them. I found myself just hoping that Shakma would take everybody out in grand fashion although we didn't really get the grand fashion other than Richard's body. That's, that's it. Unfortunate. The events of this seem really basic and kind of aimless. And yes, it is. That's why aimlessly people just end up walking around a lot in this film, because it's pretty aimless. Shockma really goes at the doors. We already talked about this. He attacks the hell out of those doors. And those are the like real intense moments. I laughed at the part in the hallway where the shadow of Shakma slowly ended up creeping into the scene. There's like some moonlight coming through the window in the hallway, and then you slowly just like see the silhouette shadow of Shakma just like creep into that moonlight. I, just, I laughed because it, it just looks so funny. It looks so funny. I did appreciate that little bit for the comedy. Why does Sam throw a mug at the fire extinguisher glass? Uh, because there is a hammer attached to that box. Literally, you can see it in the scene. So I don't, I mean, I guess like he, maybe he grabbed the mug as like a potential way to defend himself if Shakma showed up and then he just got so mad or he was trying to find Kim at the time that he's like, I need to make noise. I'll just throw this there. I guess he just wasn't thinking, but there's literally a little hammer right there. You didn't need to break the mug. You could have held on to it as a way to defend yourself when Shakma showed up. I did, I did not think that Tracy was going to end up dying. I didn't think Kim was going to end up dying either, especially after Tracy died. Because with a lot of these older films, especially 80s, 90s, there always needs to be that love interest who makes it. So I did kind of like the aspect of it being kind of nihilistic for Sam's character. Like everything went wrong, everything went to hell. And, you know, it was partially his fault because he didn't finish it off. But I'll talk about that in a minute. But... Yeah, I just did not see it coming with Tracy and or Kim ending up dying, but I like that aspect to it. I think everyone should have died in this. That would have been nice. What's the deal with Sam dialing 911 and then not talking? I guess it was supposed to be this moment of him just being in like so much shock that he couldn't even verbalize on the phone that he needed help or anything. But I think they drew that out way too much and it just was ridiculous but it also ended up being kind of funny because it was so ridiculous so I guess that's kind of a good thing so I'm gonna thumbs up that in <laughs> overall uh this film is the definition of bad pacing yes this is the definition of bad pacing I've kind of already beat that to ho horse to death so I'm gonna leave it at that 
In the end, Sam has to finish the job he was told to do in the first place. Compassionate person or terrible employee? You make the decision on what you think with that. Because obviously he was told initially to give enough drugs to Shakma to just kill him. And then he was like, oh my god, that's so terrible, don't do that. And then he went to like dose up the needle, but he gets so distracted by talking about this game they're going to be playing that he fills it up with the wrong drug, which I think is a drug that just makes him even more aggressive, or at least that's what was implied, and then things get worse. So it was kind of, it started with him, it started to kind of make the point that because he wasn't willing to kill this animal that he saw as being tested on and being innocent, that was going to lead to everyone's demise. But in actuality, if you think about it, it's just the fact that he got distracted by the game and didn't fill it properly. Which is weird, too, because when he grabs the wrong bottle, he literally looks at it when he sticks the needle in and starts drawing the liquid into it. I'm just saying. So, like, he would have seen it at that point, I believe. Just saying. But he was so hyper-focused on that game. So focused. Uh, I like the mirror trick at the end. I did like the way it ended. The mirror trick where Shakma runs at it because he thinks it's Sam and he goes through it and into the incinerator and then Sam slams it closed and turns it on and you hear the screams and yells of a pissed off Shakma being burned alive. Like that's a great ending to it, but it just took so long to get there and was so boring getting up to that point that you're just kind of like, you just raise an eyebrow at that point and you're just like, oh, okay, but are we done yet still? Because I'm still wanting just this to be done. That said, do not watch this film when you're laying down on a couch because I started getting very tired because <laughs> this film facilitates that. Uh, and it is, I think I said it, but if I didn't, it's, an, it's like an hour and 40 minutes. So it's just, it's too much. Uh, it has a made for TV feel to it actually. It really does, and let's be honest, like, the best parts are the very ending, or the very end, the setup to the premise in the, in the first place, and the scenes of Shakma going at those doors. That is what's interesting. This plays off the perception of people who play games like Dungeons & Dragons being eccentric. I already talked about that. And the last thing I really want to bring up is kind of the bigger themes at play in this film, which are, uh, there's obviously an overt theme about humans messing with nature, and how that can backfire. This is something that's been used in horror films a lot uh, just recently, and I will have a review up for that. Actually, I might put that up before this review. I'm doing one for Night of the Lepus, which the same type of thing, like humans messing with nature, especially in a scientific way, uh, doing experiments, and that's what um, leads to even bigger problems. You know, this whole idea that humans feel like they can use nature and control nature for their own you know, research and their own uh, means and with no sort of uh, complications in that, no ramifications of it. So this film and a lot of other films kind of do that of saying, you know, you think you can mess with nature like this, but when you do, there's a very big risk and here's this type of risk. So this film kind of plays off that whole thing. Uh, but it also focuses on the, the big thing about testing on animals, which did become a big movement. I guess uh, the animal rights movement really started in like the 1970s, apparently. But there were some like key animal rights books that ended up coming out in the 80s. And actually one apparently in 1990 when this film came out. So I don't know if that sort of those books or that kind of movement had any play in this or this was just an idea. Because that happens too. Like, you know, people like myself and other people who do movie reviews or movie analysis have a tendency to read into scripts, but sometimes there isn't really much of anything to actually read into. We just read into it for ourselves, which is fine, you know, because every film has its own kind of interpretation for people. And there are filmmakers out there who love to encourage that, like, you know, David Lynch and John Carpenter, they're two big ones that, you know, they won't really explain their films. They're just like, this is what I made. It has meaning to me, but if it, whatever meaning it has to you is great, go for it. So they like the fact that people interpret it differently. So that's fine. But anyway, this film, ugh, I'll rate it on two in two ways because that's how I do films like this. So as an actual film in the pantheon of all films, it's a one-star film. It's not very good at all. As a so bad it's good film, I can give it two stars, I guess. I was between one and a half and two. 
but I'll bump it up to two because if you watch this with some friends and just make fun of it while it's going on, you can have some fun. I mean, you, you can. And you can fill that, you know, excessive walking around time with some conversation. So that's probably the best way to watch this, just saying. But anyway, um, I love to hear other people's takes on this film. Do you actually love this film? Tell me why. Put it in the comments down there. Let's talk about it. Uh, but do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. That is your way to repay me for liking this video or any video I've ever done because it just takes you a second. It's very easy and painless for you. It doesn't cost any money or anything. And it's going to a great cause, which is giving me the validation of knowing that people are actually enjoying what I'm doing and kind of helping to drive me forward and keep doing these review videos and you know building this nerdy horror community that I'm trying to build. So regardless, I really do appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate your time just watching this. And until next time, keep it brutal.